So I find that I'm a, a bit of a, an absolutist, and so I have a hard time with um, both and. I tend to be extreme one or the other. And so when I hear things like, um, when I hear you say something like, you know, boredom and our reaction to boredom uh, is often the space where uncomfortable feelings bubble up and um, distracting, you know, sort of self-centered thoughts uh, arise, um, then part of me says, well, then I should, I mean, in that sense, I should, that's sometimes if I want to watch a movie or read a book or uh, do something that is ultimately relaxing and soothing, um, it's almost, I almost hear in that suggestion to like be there with that, with that sense of boredom, uh, I hear like, well, then what would be the justification for ever watching a movie or cool. reading a book or... Or even getting out of bed in the morning. Or you know? getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? Sure, yes. The, the justification for um, watching a movie, reading a book, calling a friend and going out for dinner uh, would be to, let, let's, let's take the last example, calling a friend and going out for dinner, just to share the happiness that you feel with another being. Whereas the reason for, for instance, going to work in the morning, well, it depends. If you love your work, then the reason for going to work is to share your happiness with, spread your happiness in, in the world. But let's say you don't particularly enjoy your work, but you do it because you you have a family, you need to support your family and earn your living, so you, you go to work. The reason for going to work in the morning is, is a response to a practical need. So those are two reasons for doing something. One, calling a friend for dinner because you feel you feel this bubbling up of happiness and you want it's natural for a human being to share that feeling with others. So it just comes from as a it doesn't come from a sense of lack or need. It's just a bubbling over of your happiness. The second example was a response to a practical situation. Now, there's a third reason, but those are the two reasons, good reasons for getting out of bed in the morning and doing anything. Now, there's a third reason, which is for, for, for doing something, such as watching a movie, reading a book, and that is to distract oneself from the uh, from uncomfortable feelings. Let's say boredom, for instance, is an uncomfortable feeling. It's not pleasant. I feel this boredom. I don't want to feel it. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. Now, if I do something such as watch a movie, I will be distracted from the boredom. And this is a third reason to, to re relieve the sense of lack, the sense of dis-ease, or, or the sense of fear. This is the third reason why, why we do things, to avoid or relieve the sense of lack, fear, agitation, dis-ease. Now, all of these fear, lack, uh, psychological fear I'm talking about, lack, dis-ease, agitation, uh, they are all ways in which the separate self expresses itself in our feelings. What is at the root of all these feelings is the core separate self. Now, if 
when we feel one of these dis uncomfortable feelings, we reach for an object. And by an object, I mean it could be a gross object like food, wine, tobacco, drugs. Or it could be a, a slightly more subtle mental object, um, reading a book, watching a movie. It could even be a, a, um, a refined state of mind. But, but nevertheless, if we, in order to avoid facing and feeling the discomfort of these feelings, we reach for some kind of an object. It would seem at first glance that the feeling of boredom that prompted this desire for the object goes away. It doesn't. All that happens is the separate self that is at the heart of that feeling simply goes to sleep in the body. It's true that as long as we're watching the movie, we don't feel the boredom because our attention is engaged on the movie. But as soon as the movie finishes, the sense of boredom or lack will be there again. And then we'll get up and we'll go to the fridge or we'll do whatever it is. And in this way, the separate self never gets discovered in ourself because we are always relieving it through objects. And this is actually uh, the uh, most, most of the desires people have are this third form of desires, of, of desire, the desire that is there to relieve the desire and fear. Sorry, the, the, the desire that is there arises to relieve the sense of lack or, or fear that is the root of the separate self. And we are simply, if we are content to avoid facing the separate self in the body through these objects, we are simply postponing it. The separate self will come back again and again and again and again and again. It will show up as boredom, as fear, as anxiety, as sorrow, as lack, and it will manifest in our lives as Primarily, conflict in relationships. Conflict in ourselves, and that conflict we will begin to spread around us, and this conflict will be reflected back to us in our circumstances. So, the good reason for doing something, for acting on a desire, is one, if it is required for a practical purpose. Either the needs of your own body, the needs of the people around you, or just a response to a situation in the world. That's one reason. The second reason is you feel this, this peace or love or happiness, or, or for instance, if you're an artist, you, you feel beauty, and it's natural. You want to make something. You want to play music. You want to share. You want to express the beauty that you feel and turn that beauty in, into a form that can be sent out into the world. That's the second reason. And then there is this third reason which initiates most of our desires, avoiding the separate self, postponing having to face the separate self. So if our desires are initiated by this third reason, I would recommend, for instance, if the desire to watch a movie arises uh, and you feel it, it comes out of a sense of lack, a sense of boredom, a sense of dis-ease, a sense of I can't stand the silence, I can't stand the emptiness, I can't stand the being alone with myself, I would recommend pausing before you start the movie. Not, not, I'm not recommending not watching the movie. I would just recommend pausing and allowing that feeling to come up so you, you see it, you face the discomfort of it. Because the only thing the ego cannot stand is the, the clear light of awareness. So I, I would sit down in silence for five minutes and face the discomfort that is, that is prompting the desire to watch the movie, read the book, whatever it is. And having faced it, allowed it to arise in yourself, you, you leave the story on one side, allow the feeling to arise, uh, invite the feeling to come fully up into the light of consciousness and then let it relax and expand into the space of awareness, and then turn the movie on. I suppose the, the reason I asked is because I actually, I, I, I don't feel, I can't remember the last time I felt bored. Um, I would say the last time I felt anxious was maybe the second night of this 
retreat, maybe the first night, where I realized, even as somebody who loves to spend time by myself, um, loves to just sit, uh, that there was a deeper, you know, there was there was a point where I I, I felt uncomf you know, yeah. uncomfortable rising up. But for for most of the part, most of my day, I actually crave those quiet moments. And so oftentimes, I would not say every time, but I would say oftentimes when the impulse to do something that's entertainment, and I, and I brought that up specifically because I feel like entertainment is kind of a fine line between celebratory, an act that comes from happiness, or an act that goes it, towards happiness. Exactly. That I, it can be either. Yeah. The same activity could be either in the service of the avoidance of the separate self or an expression of of happiness and, and we have to be sensitive to just feel I, I would recommend just pausing finding out in yourself what is this desire initiated by if it's just you feel perfectly at ease and you just like to spend the evening watching a movie then then just go ahead if you feel that it comes from boredom or it, boredom may not be your particular thing you may feel it more as anxiety or fear, it's different for everyone, but boredom, fear, anxiety, sense of lack. If you feel that you're distracting yourself from your anxiety by um, giving your attention to, to the object, to the movie, just pause, feel the discomfort of the anxiety. There'll be a little bit of a rebellion inside you because, because the anxiety is used to being relieved through the acquisition of objects, activities, or states. So you have to be courageous, and, and not, not strong, but, but courageous. Face the discomfort of this anxiety. Let it come. And then watch the movie. And it, it may be something, I'm not suggesting that, it may not happen very often. So most of the time you feel your, your desires are just a, just a a sharing of, of the, the, the peace that you feel or their response to your, your, your situation in life. That, that's fine. Then there's no problem. Just be sensitive to those residues, those old habits of acting on behalf of the separate self. And in, in this way, our, our lives just become more and more and more and more an, an expression of this love and understanding so that every aspect of our life so that we really live the teaching we don't just think the teaching we don't even just think and feel the teaching but we think feel and live the teaching in our relationships in our activities thank you